In this video, we're gonna show you how to do a pre-flight inspection on a Cessna 172. All right, so the first thing we wanna check uh, in our airplane is make sure we have the required documents on board. We have to have the pilot's operated handbook, the POH, we have that. We also have to have weight and balance data, we have that on board, as well as the airworthiness and registration. So we have all our required documents on board. After that, if the airplane has a gust lock installed, you're gonna to wanna to remove the gust lock and put it usually in the seat pocket behind you. Now, before we turn on any power to the airplane, we wanna check, make sure all the circuit breakers are in and all the electrical switches are off. They are, so we can go ahead and turn on the master switch. Once we have the master switch on, we can lower the flaps. And now with the master switch on, we can read the fuel quantity. Looks like we got 11 and a half gallons and 12.8 gallons in the left and right tank. So we'll verify that when we get outside manually, but uh, we're done with the electricity so we can turn off the master switch and head outside. Okay, as we exit the cockpit, first thing we're gonna do is uh, inspect the main landing gear. So on the left, main landing gear we're looking to make sure that the tire is uh, in good shape there's plenty of tread left on it nut is on and this cotter pin is holding in now the brakes what we'll look for is there is no hydraulic fluid uh, dripping down from it and it's kind of hard to see the brake sometimes you can look down and see that the brake pad is in good shape we're going to check and make sure the baggage door is locked and secured and it is and work our way down the side of the airplane here just checking that there's no damage along the side of the fuselage and work our way back to the tail anywhere there's an inspection plate we want to check and make sure the inspection plate is on and all the screws are in it underneath here we're going to take a look at the rudder cable make sure that the rudder cable is in good condition and all the bolts and nuts and cotter pins are in. This airplane's got vortex generators. So we wanna make sure that all of those are in place. Check the leading edge to make sure there's no dents along the leading edge. Next, we'll check the elevator to make sure that it has full travel and it doesn't make any binding sounds. Make sure that's very smooth and free. Anywhere that there is a bolt and nut, you want to check to make sure that it's secure. The outsides of the elevator have a grounding strap also attached. Checking the general condition, making sure there's a bolt and a nut. And now we want to look at the uh, where the elevator attaches to the cables that go to the yoke. Make sure that the nuts are all attached. And Cheyenne's going to lift up the elevator now, and we're going to look underneath it we can see the cable that attaches to the elevator there as well. While you're down here underneath the airplane, it's a good time to also look underneath the belly and just check and make sure there's no damage, make sure the tail hasn't hit in the ground, especially if you rent an airplane. You want to be super careful uh, to be very thorough with this so you don't get uh, blamed for something that you didn't do. Okay, now we're gonna check the rudder and the vertical stabilizer. First, we're gonna make sure all the vortex generators, the VGs are on, as well as all the attachment points where there's a bolt and a nut is secure. At the top, we have an antenna and we have some lights. Unless you're flying at night, it's not required that you check the lights. I usually check them on the first flight of the day and we check those already this morning. So for sake of time, we will not be turning on all the lights in this video. All right, moving around to the other side, we're gonna check the same thing. Shine's gonna check the uh, VGs up the side of the tail and make sure all the connection points have a bolt and a nut. Now we'll lift up the elevator and take a look at this side where we can see the rudder cable and the elevator cable and all the connections as well. While I'm in underneath here, I'll look at the VGs and any inspection panel that's here, make sure that it's properly attached. This is the elevator trim tab and uh, lift that up one more time. The trim tab's got a linkage on it. We wanna check and make sure that that is connected as well. Okay, working our way around to the leading edge. 
Cheyenne's checking the leading edge to make sure that there's no dents and that the inspection panel is on. Checking down the fuselage, make sure there's no dents or anything wrong on the fuselage. The ELT antenna is attached. Okay, as we approach the flaps, uh, first thing on the flaps, lowering the flaps is actually not a requirement of the POH on the pre-flight, but many people do because it helps us see the flaps a little bit better. First thing I like to look at is uh, this part of the flap right here, because you can't really see this part when the flaps are retracted. Make sure there's no damage to the flap. It is normal that the flap has a little bit of play in it. We're gonna go around underneath the flap and we're gonna take a look at the flap tracks. This is what you could not see if you didn't lower the flaps on pre-flight. Make sure that that is free and clear. You've got a linkage right here. Make sure that it's attached, the bolt and nut, and checking the flap track on this side. While I'm under the airplane, I'm gonna check any inspection panel and make sure that it has its screws holding it on securely. Okay, now we're gonna check the aileron. Shine's gonna check it, make sure that it moves freely up and down. And it doesn't bind, it doesn't make any odd noises. So one advantage of checking your flight controls while you're outside the airplane, when you do your flight control inside the plane, you can't necessarily hear if anything's binding or not. So they move nice and freely. Your aileron is held on by three piano hinges. You wanna check each one of those piano hinges is on and the four nuts are secure. There's the first one, there's the second one, and there's the third one. The Cessna also has, it's hard to see because it's painted in the video, it also has a counterweight on the outboard edge of the aileron. You wanna make sure that that is there. Um, be careful never to stick your fingers in there like I just did, because what can happen is somebody can move the aileron or the wind can move it and it would pitch your finger. And that would hurt. Okay, so now moving out to the uh, outside of the airplane, checking the wing tip, checking the lights, making sure that they're secure. Again, we would check them for operation if it was at night or the first flight of the day. This airplane has VGs on the wings as well. So um, we're gonna check that all the VGs are in place and there's no dents or damage on the wing. Okay, now we'll also uh, check our right main gear tire, just like we did the, the left side. Okay, now we're gonna verify the fuel tanks have the amount of fuel in them that we think we do. So Cheyenne's gonna jump up on this uh, step and use that handle right there and um, verify the fuel. About 11 gallons? Yeah. All right, so make sure that the fuel cap gets securely put back in place. And while we're up here, we will check the top of the wing. We can check the top of the wing, make sure there's no damage. You can check your antennas. And it's just a great place to get a good view of the top of the wing. So now we're gonna check the uh, oil. This airplane holds eight quarts of oil, seven is viewable on the dipstick, and five is the minimum. Okay, great, looks like we have six quarts of oil. Just hand tighten that only. And before Cheyenne shuts that door, I wanna show you, there is a fuel strainer drain right there, that white rectangular knob. If it's the first flight of the day, we like to pull that fuel strainer drain and it will drain fuel out of this little nozzle right here. Unfortunately, it just drains it on the ramps. So There's not a really good way to do this uh, single-handedly if you're by yourself into a container. So you just, strain the fuel out and get any contaminants that, that might be in the filter out. As we're here, we'll look down and check out the exhaust. You wouldn't want to touch the exhaust if it was uh, hot, obviously, if the airplane had been flown, but it's cool, cool now. So you can kind of grab the exhaust and wiggle it just to make sure that it is secure. It shouldn't move any. Taking a look at the nose gear, want to make sure that the nut is on the end with a cotter pin. Check the general condition of the tire. Check the shimmy dampener to make sure it's not leaking. And there should be about three finger lengths. There you go, about three finger lengths of the chrome part of the strut showing. 
Great, and while we're down here, we'll take a look at the air filter. Make sure that the air filter does not have anything that's uh, blocking the air from getting through. Take a look inside the engine cowling, make sure there's no bird's nests or anything building in there, and you can also see your alternator belt. Check all the screws are in on the spinner as well, and now we'll check the propeller. Run your hands up and down the propeller, the leading edge and the trailing edge, make sure there's no significant nicks. Okay, and checking inside the cowling on this side and make sure all the fittings are in place, all the screws securely holding the cowling on. On this side of the airplane, we have the static port. We wanna make sure that the static port, the hole in the port there is clean. There's nothing blocking it. And then we're gonna do a uh, inspection of this wing, just like we did the other wing. The only difference is we do have a pitot tube here on the left wing. Make sure the pitot tube is clear. There is a fuel vent on this side. It should not be obstructed. Next, we're gonna check the stall warning horn. Uh, if you have one of these devices here, you can uh, put some reverse pressure on it, some suction, and you hear that sound? I don't know if my phone is uh, picking it up or not. Try it one more time, Shan. That sound you're hearing is coming from inside the cockpit and that's letting you know that the stall warning horn uh, does work. And looking down the remaining part of the leading edge, all the VGs are in place. The landing lights are there, not cracked. And we would test those out again if it was nighttime. And we would test out our lights. Okay, and last thing to do is uh, check the fuel for any contaminations out of the tank. We go to the lowest point of the tank. Shane's gonna take about a half of a cup. A 100 low lead is blue in color, so if you hold it over something white, like the white airplane or a white floor in our case, you can see that the fuel is indeed 100 low lead. You can kind of tell by the smell of it. We're looking for any contaminants, making sure that there's no water in it. Water would be bubbles in the bottom of the tank and any other uh, debris. If you do find any debris or water, just keep sampling it until you get all of it out, especially if an airplane sat outside for a while. Okay, after we have that sampling, we'll just uh, dump that back into the tank if you like, or you can discard it, whatever you, however you choose. And Shine's gonna also check the fuel for contaminants on the right wing. Okay, looks good. Okay, the last thing to do is go ahead and remove the wheel chocks. If the airplane's parked outside uh, on the ramp and the ramp's not even, you might consider putting the parking brake on before removing the wheel chocks. Well, I hope this video was helpful. If so, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And you can visit our website, freedomflight.com, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.